This is my old horn rack from my Subaru, which has now been sold. Um, I am part of the way through uh, refinishing the rack, and I've had a lot of questions about this rack, um, how it works and all that, so I figure this is probably a good time to go over it, how it works and all. Um, so basically I got one side disassembled over here and the other side still put together. Um, so this is the bracket that actually mounts to the vehicle itself. It's got rubber feet here and uh, the, there's uh, another one on the other side that's still attached to the rack. Let me uh, flip the rack over and show you. Now these uh, brackets originally came from a police car light bar. And I purchased this rack fully built from a uh, horn collector friend of mine in the Tacoma, Washington area. I have no idea where he got these light bar brackets, how he got these brackets, I just don't know. Um, but basically how this works is the rubber feet sit on the car roof and then they have these little metal plates here. Um, here's the other one. Uh, they were uh, cut. Um, but these are the original metal plates from the police car light brackets. Um, and they have, I'll show you the other one. They got these screw holes here, and those are for screws that actually screw into the roof of the car. And then they attach with this big 3 8 bolt. Goes through that hole in the middle. And then threads in back to this little plate here. On the other one, which, let me show you, is this guy here. It sits down there, and you thread the bolts in, screw it down tight, and um, that locks the rack down. Now, between the mounting bracket it's, there is, and the actual rack, there's this little 2x6 uh, wooden block here. Um, there's the old one that I took out, and then here's the new one that I'm going to make. I'm going to uh, get this all uh, sealed up and then paint it. And then on top of that, the rack is just a uh, quarter inch thick piece of steel that has the right uh, bolt pattern drilled for the horn, and then the air pipe is just a 90 degree elbow that's welded on to the bottom there. And then I have two more 45s uh, going out to my air connection, which is capped off. Uh, when there's not a hose connected, that connection is capped off. And then this I have wrapped in pipe insulation just to prevent it uh, from scratching the paint on the car. Now to affix a horn, uh, I undo these bolts. I have, this is just an aluminum cap. And then this in the middle is just a rubber uh, gasket that goes between the horn and the rack. And interestingly enough, this is actually how most locomotives do it. They they just take the air pipe and weld it right to the sheet metal on the locomotive and then they put one of these rubber gaskets and then bolt the horn down. There's no physical pipe connection between the air supply and the actual horn, but just the pressure of it mounting against this rubber pad is enough to make a really good seal. And that is... Uh, that's my rack and that's how it works. Um, now, as for actually screwing those plates into the car, I, my choice in the matter is I take the car to a uh, professional body shop and have them do it because they know what screws to use, they know where and how to attach it so that it won't damage the, um, the roll bar in the vehicle, and they can also seal up the holes. So um, I would rather just pay money, have a professional do it, than try and kind of jury-rig it together myself and then have something go wrong later on. So, remember earlier when I said I was going to have a body mount, body shot mount the rack? I lied. Um, now, the rack isn't uh, mounted yet, but I figured out that uh, it's not that hard to do. I'm just going to do it myself. So, here it is, all fully assembled. I got new wood blocks in the center. I got the... Uh, light bar brackets and then these. Um, basically the process here is pretty simple. Uh, just uh, fit the rack on the roof where it needs to go. Um, get everything uh, attached the way it's going to be and then uh, I'm going to take a trusty old sharpie and then 
mark where I want the holes to be, uh, drill some pilot holes that are uh, just slightly smaller. Um, I'm actually using number 10 screws, uh, number 10 sheet metal screws in these locations here. So I'm going to drill a uh, hole just slightly smaller than that, just kind of as a pilot hole. And then the process here is basically just going to be um, uh, take some kind of sil sealant. Uh, in this case I'm going to use clear silicone RTV, the exact same stuff you use to fix Leslie RS diaphragms. It works great for this application because when it cures it's flexible and it's watertight. Um, so you take some sealant, put it in the holes, put it on the screws, and then put a bead um, on the back of this mounting plate here before you stick the plate on finally. So I'm um, going to mark the holes, drill them, and, uh, and we'll do the final sealing and attaching. And uh, after it's all cured in 24 hours, we'll be good to go. So, there are holes in the roof of my car now, but those will get sealed up pretty soon. That was a very, very, very odd feeling drilling those. Um, and this is the last time my car is ever going to have a bare roof. Uh, one quick note here. Um, I did put a final coat of uh, black paint over the top of the bolts, um, just to cover up all the scratches from reattaching everything. So now it's just the... Uh, Final mount. Now, the stuff I'm using, like I said, is just uh, um, clear silicone RTV um, and just a healthy amount of that and let it cure for 24 hours, make sure everything's tight, and it should be. Alright, so the metal brackets are now mounted in. There is I don't know if you can see it, but there's a nice, good, thick bead of uh, silicone RTV behind the, it, which will make a good seal. Um, the last thing to do is put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolt and tighten it down, and then the rack will be permanently attached to the roof. And then uh, give it 24 hours for the RTV to seal and harden up. And we'll be ready to uh, mount some horns. Now, one final word here about if you decide to do your own homemade horn bracket, whatever you choose is up to you, but um, these light bar brackets are a really good choice because as you can see, they have a very, very wide base to them. Um, one thing about mounting locomotive horns on a vehicle roof is that um, the heaviest horn I've ever dealt with was an all cast iron Wabco E2 that clocked in at 70 pounds. That was fun to uh, lug up on the roof of a car. Um, but when you have that much weight sitting on what is a fairly narrow area, you, whenever you hit the gas or the brake, um, especially if you have to uh, brake suddenly for whatever reason, you get a lot of torquing motion, you know, a lot of rocking back and forth torque motion on, on your uh, horn rack. And so, these wide feet are really nice because it prevents these, it takes the force off of these bolts in this bracket and distributes it onto the roof. So these screws here don't actually have that much force on them. Um, these wide feet basically make it so that all the force on this rack is down and the, f the rubber feet are what actually takes up all the twisting, torquing motion. So if you do decide to home build some kind of rack of your own design, um, you want to have that into consideration. You want it to actually have a fairly wide base. One thing I've always recommended people is maybe look into some of the commercially available uh, smooth roof rack mounting systems out there. Uh, Thule and Yakima are two that come to mind. Um, and what you might do with those is spread, is instead of using one tower, use two towers but space them fairly close together so you get kind of this, you know, uh, wide base like that. Um, otherwise, you know, sky's the limit, and as you can see, it doesn't have to be super complicated in order to work. So that's the story of my uh, second vehicle horn rack mount.